seems, it seems as if everywhere on earth is trying to market itself. Different cities, different countries, and you ask yourself sometimes, is there enough love to go around? And is it as simple as merely slapping a heart on a city's name to actually market the place? Well, as you know, it's much more complex than that. And so really what I want to talk about are some of those complexities and also the marketing of Amsterdam this afternoon. And the th first thing with place marketing, you have to ask yourself, who owns the destination? Okay, now this is where it's different to marketing regular brands. Regular brands have owners, and they can decide to do what they want. And they make you a promise, buy me and your life will get better. That's the intrinsic promise of all brands. Now this brings me to my communist dictators. And most places on earth do not have one single person running the place who can decide to do whatever they want to do. Most places have numbers of people who are important influencers and that brings us really to this point about partnership and stakeholders. And that's why today, I think, is such an important event to actually bring people together in partnership because we see that as the most important success factor for places and destinations that you're working together in one vision. So if I say Barcelona, what do you think of? Yeah, Gaudi, that terrible football team, Messi, Miro... <laughs> I actually, for some strange reason, think of Faulty Towers. Now, why is that? Manuel, I am from Barcelona. Now, when that TV series was written, it was 1975, and John Cleese and Connie Booth, when they wrote that, they wanted to pick the place which was the blackest hole in Europe. And at that stage, under Franco still, still alive till 76, it was a black hole. There was no inward investment. There was no tourism. And they picked it as the worst possible place. I mean, think of the transformation now when we think about Barcelona and all the fantastic things you can do there. And intrinsically important to that success is this picture of actually a, a shared vision and the people, the government and industry coming together to work together. And again, that's why this meeting and this kind of meeting is so important today. So partnership of stakeholders is really key. I want to touch on positioning, and I think positioning is a really important topic for Amsterdam, and I'm going to come on to reflect on that specifically with Amsterdam a little bit later on. But it's asking the question, what do you stand for? And in my mind, it's about more than just standing out, attracting publicity. It's more than that. It's more about this, holding a position in the consumer's head, whoever that consumer is and having a position in their mind as to what you're all about. That's the key thing. Now, some places, and this is one of my favourite places, focus on people. People are important. And you go back to Glasgow in the early 80s, and they came up with a great idea, Glasgow's miles better. They also said Glasgow smiles better. They invented this rather cute Mr Smiley character to go with it, and actually it was a great success in the UK. It really helped to regenerate the city and actually give it a focus. Last week, interestingly, they've just launched their latest campaign. It got a lot of press in the UK. People make Glasgow. Got a fair bit of criticism as well for being rather simplistic. And as I said, we'll yet to see what actually happens with that campaign. Now, one of my favourite quotes about a city is from this guy, Billy Connolly. Great comedian, Scottish comedian. And one of the best quotes I've ever seen about a city, and I'll try to do a Scottish accent. The great thing about Glasgow is if there was a nuclear war, it would look exactly the same afterwards. <laughs> great place, Glasgow. You've got to go. Go to the Macintosh Museum. It's a wonderful experience. Um, another place that focused on people. Go back to New York in 1976. You had the recession. You had energy crisis. You had terrible crime. The, the state was bankrupt, and President Ford refused to bail them out. And there was only one way out, and that was money. They had to generate cash. And they came up with this idea, market today, and visitors come tomorrow, money in the bank. There was only one glitch they needed to actually execute that and get the visitors to come. And so they turned to this guy, Milton Glaser, one of the great designers of the world, and they asked him to come up with an idea and a positioning 
for marketing of New York. And of course, he came up with that classic symbol, I love New York. And because they said it would probably only run for six months, he did it for free. <laughs> now, that would appeal to a Dutch heart, I'm sure. Good value for money. Um, and as we know, it's still running today in a fantastic campaign and probably the world's most famous place. So absolutely wonderful. Sometimes when you've got nothing to use or market or position, what do you do? You build a fantastic building that actually creates its own infrastructure and energy in Bilbao, the Guggenheim. Go back into the 60s and the 50s in Australia. Melbourne and Sydney were battling it out for being the number one destination. Melbourne had won the 56 Olympics. They looked like they were pulling ahead. What did Sydney do? They held a competition for an opera house and built that magnificent building in the 60s and 70s that have never looked back. So architecture can be absolutely key to a place and one of the key indicators. And the point is this, if you don't stand for anything, if you try to stand for too many things, I was talking to Franz about this over lunch, if you stand for too many things, it becomes wallpaper. And people do not get the message. You do have to have a point of focus. That's the really important point. So Amsterdam, and I want to think a little bit about Amsterdam and I Amsterdam and what that's all about, and I've put together what I call um, a scorecard. Now our scorecard covers a number of different topics when we work with cities and destinations. Too many, I think, to cover for today. So I've actually focused down on a few, I think, are the key ones. And I'm going to talk about identity. I'm going to talk about organization. I'm going to talk about infrastructure. I'm going to talk about digital, tourism attractiveness, architecture. And then finally, we'll come to this thing, positioning in Amsterdam, and talk a little bit about that. So let's kick off with identity. This was actually me this morning at the airport. I love that. Wonderful. Um, when it comes to the visual identity, I think you've done a fantastic job. It's a, it's a beautifully crafted identity. I think what you've done with the physical logotypes like this is really clever. You Google the brand and you get lots of pictures of tourists with the logotype. That's what you want. So I think a really fantastic job in both the, the visual side as well as the verbal side, which is very important. I think the goals you're setting are both good but realistic. I think you can achieve these goals and they seem, they seem authentic. And on a similar note, when it comes to authenticity, um, look at the core values. And I think that lines up completely with how I see Amsterdam and the Dutch. Creativity. This is a creative place. Innovation. It's an innovative place. Entrepreneurial spirit. I think you've actually captured those values very well. So extremely strong, good and believable. I think when it comes to organisation, and obviously this came in to being earlier this year, with Stockholm, we actually merged our inward investment, our tourism organisations into one organisation very early on. And I think it's one of the most important things we did, actually bringing a focus for the brand and its efforts. So bringing the city brand into focus under one united platform is really important. I think it's a really smart thing. And I think it's absolutely vital to make this work for the city. So really high marks for that. Planes, trains, automo automobiles, and ships. Now, I travel in Holland quite a bit because we've actually got quite a large organization of people in Holland, and I come across to meet them and work with them quite a bit. Um, and we take the train everywhere. And all my Dutch friends and colleagues, they complain about the trains. And I've got to tell you now, go to England. <laughs> go to the USA. And you will not complain about the trains. You've got a fantastic system. So don't complain about it. Um, Schiphol is obviously a very unique airport, fantastic asset again, and one of the things inward investment looks for, one of the top three things that companies will look for, direct intercontinental flights, really important. Fantastic port, a fantastic road network, probably too many cars, but never mind, it's, it's there. Tourism attractiveness, and what I really like here is the wide choice. And in reading the research, it seems that people make use of that wide choice and visit different areas and see different things. And that's a fantastic thing. The other thing I like is the walkability. You can move around very easily in Amsterdam and see a lot of it. So really fantastic. Architecture. And here, I like the urban renewal. 
that brings cities to life. Liverpool have been very good at doing that. I like classic Amsterdam, obviously, and I like the modern architecture, like this building we're in, and the building over the water. So all of those things make it really interesting. I would use the word eclectic. So it's a mix. In Scandinavia, we very much have a Scandinavian style. You tend to have a very wide range of styles, but that makes it interesting and brings it to life. So again, strong marks for that. So if all the, everything's wonderful, <laughs> what's the problem? Is there a problem or not? Has anybody heard of this magazine called Monocle? Yes. yes. It's a very, very good, slightly highbrow, design-oriented, architecture, city-focused magazine. It's about that thick. You can't carry the thing around it so heavy. Um, well, they come out every year with their most livable cities ranking the top 25 most livable cities. Okay, so the question is always, everybody looks at this, and says, well, where are we? How did we score? So the number one city this year was? Copenhagen, wonderful, wonderful Copenhagen, number one. And then interestingly, look at the rest of the top seven. So you have Helsinki in there, you have Stockholm at number seven, so the Nordics scoring incredibly well. And so the question is, with this great city of Amsterdam, why did you come in at number 22? And you're a new entry, by the way. You've just come into the top 25. What's the one word you'd apply to Amsterdam? And what was interesting was, um, those 30 people, every one of them wanted more than one word. Not one could make it in one word. And a lot of them, in fact, most of them, wanted words of kind of a different flavour. So they would all use the word bicycles, tulips, canals. Equally, they would talk about prostitution or drugs in the same mix. And that was a common characteristic I could see every time they had to answer that one question. I think the key for Amsterdam is that word from Monocle, redefinition and repositioning. And I think what you've really got to think about is how do we actually just by doing other things and repositioning Amsterdam, drown out the other stuff so people focus on this. And I think that's the job that needs doing, that redefinition and repositioning. I don't think you have to move very far, funnily enough, because I think a lot of the things you've got naturally here you could use, but it just does need some thought if you're going to stop that being the first thing people think about. And I think that's a really important consideration. Now... With all places, all of these things, you've got to be consistent over time. You've got to keep the concept simple. You also have to be persistent. You have to keep on doing the same thing over and over again. That's why it's a very good idea to get politicians involved in place marketing very early on from both sides of the political sp spectrum. Because guaranteed, you're not going to pull off a great brand campaign for a city in four years. It's going to be eight years and 12 years and 16 years, and you don't want them flip-flopping with different approaches every four years. You want to get them to buy into your brand over a long period of time. But one of my favorite quotes, again, applied to places, and leave you this with my final thought, is just this, that actually Rome wasn't built in a day. It takes time. Thank you very much.